Hello everyone, this is Mundan Nagaman. Today we are going to discuss a topic callback. Callback is general concept in Python as well as in other languages as well. So we are going to see what is callback and how are we going to use the callback in GUI application development or let's say in the image processing. But however, before proceeding to the GUI development or say image processing, we need to understand what is callback. This concept is common for every languages. Just go through the simple example. Before starting the simple example, we will understand the technical definition about the callback. Calling one function from another function, taking some context from the calling function. So however, if you are just not too much technical, then you will not be understanding this very clearly. So for that, we will go with a real time example, then you will try to map the same understanding with our functions. Let's say you are accosted by the broker to get health insurance. And you told that you will get insurance only if you get the bonus on the month end simple as it is but however the broker will not leave you so he simply gives his mobile number you are just saving the mobile number in your mobile but however saving the mobile number will not confirm that you will definitely call him but it gives the potential or gives the probability that you can call him in a later point then what happens is in the month then you will be checking your salary and if the salary has the bonus then you may decide a broker but however that time you will be taking the mobile back from your mobiles and you will be calling this mobile number, right? So this is a simple example. So in that case, what are the things we need to just understand? For example, now you are going to check the salary and the month end. That is a simple, you can say a function. Then after you are going to check your, let's say salary with the bonus or not. So it may be with bonus or it may not be with bonus. So that is the possible event that can happen, either with bonus, without bonus. So in the event of with bonus, you are going to call the, broker so how you are going to call the broker you are not getting the mobile number that time itself because you already had the mobile number with you so with the mobile number now you are going to call him in simple words you are making the call back to the broker simple the same concept if you consider or you just transform into the let's say function point of view here three things are happening right on salary day below things are happening for example checking the salary for your employee id or your mail id you are checking then after calling back the broker as you had a mobile number already because when he saw him, so when you saw him, so you got the mobile number, right? So that mobile is with you. Now here function, just it's a general syntax. It's not about JavaScript or Python or let's say Java. So it's a general index. So you are having the function here. You are going to check the salary providing your employee ID. Then you have the broker number. Now you are not calling the broker. Just consider you have the broker object. That's all. Then if you get the salary, then by passing the employee ID, you will be getting the salary. Then you are checking whether it is more than 50,000. If it is more than 50,000, then you are calling the broker. So broker continue with parenthesis. Here actually you are calling the function. Whereas in the above function definition or function declaration, you can see the broker as the object. So there you are not calling the broker. Here you are having the only the object. But whereas if the condition or the event happens, such as like your salary is more than 50,000, then you are calling the broker. So at the time of function declaration only, you have the reference of the function, which is called broker. So here we need to understand a function is not only a function, internally it is an object. So you are passing the object initially, then after based on the event, you are calling the function because you have the object location. So the same concept, we will just try to understand with the Python code here. Since I have some experience on the retail domain, I'm going to explain with one retail experiment. See, for example, inventory. So inventory is the place where you will have all your merchandises or the products or the items will be saved there. Then I have some condition like, in order to put the product inside my inventory, I need to have the minimum amount 500 rupees worth of the products. So this is my condition. So I have the condition or I have the variable min retail, which will have the minimum retail that I expect from any product. Then I have another method add with retail check. So in this method, I'm just passing the product and its price. Considering the, there is no type checking at all here because we considering is just for example for the callback. So since you send the product, so I will be checking the price first. So minimum retail. So if it is less than the minimum retail, then I will be returning false. If it is more than or equal to the minimum retail, then inventory dot update, then the product and price will be updated. Since you inventory is now it's a dictionary. 
so i'm just adding the dictionary there then i am returning the true value that's all now this is the another function get product so here what happens is i will send the product so if it is inside the inventory then it will return the product and its price and uh, let's say the product added to the inventory and the price will be here since you know that the product is the key and the price will be your value if it is not inside the inventory then it will give the issue right it is not there and another one here the main function add to inventory then i am sending the product and price here i am sending the callback function so this callback function is nothing but our get product it is very logical that let's if the product is being added to the inventory then you will be able to see the product inside the inventory so it is logical to call the get product but however if the product is not added to the inventory then it is no mean to call the let's say the get product method right so for that reason i am just mentioning here the callback so here i am defining another function add to inventory then product price and the callback what happens is add status so this is the status from where just you will call the method add with retail check which is the first method and you will send the product and price alone so based on the price value it can be added and it can be not added as well so if it is added the add status will be true if it is not added it will be false in case of if it is added then i am calling the callback so the callback whatever the function you are just mentioning here the object reference of the function will be taken here and here with the function now you will be sending the product so then you will be seeing the product or whatever the function you have just passing inside the function you will be having the different logic to handle this product otherwise if the status is not true then you are just sending the product was not added due to low retail amount less than the what is the minimum retail amount that is not met like that you got showing the print message so this is all about so in this function so in this function you can clearly understand these are the two arguments but however this callback is not a argument it's a function object in case of or the in the event of add status is successful then you will be calling this method or the function but if it is not then you are not going to call that right so we understood that is logical also now just add to inventory then the product name shirt and the price is 800 and i am passing the get product here you can clearly see i am not sending the say i am not calling the method so get product is the function right or function so here the get product i am not calling because you clearly see there is no open and close parenthesis here i am just passing the reference of the get product right so then after i am just adding some more products like watch 500 rupees and i am passing the same get product object reference or get product function reference then you can see the different products are being added so clearly you can see this is less than 500 so obviously the add status will be false then you will not be calling the callback so this callback can be any function it's not only the get product you can be just updating other systems or you can just send a mail to the let's say inventory owner that the product has been added there can be different functions which will be having the let's say function which is having the product or you can send other details also you can send the price also for example you are just updating the other people with price what are the price you have added to the inventory so that also you can do that but however here you are you are calling the method so in case of method in, in case of successful addition you will be calling that method otherwise you are not using the object reference of the function so here just you can run the code and see so here you clearly see the product added to inventory and price is 800 everything fine in case of st add status is failure or the false condition then this will not call the callback function then it will show only the else part which is the product was not added to the re low retail amount less than the minimum retail amount 500 so here just one more time we can see like we have seen this let's say get product is the callback function right so let's say get product now i am just passing the let's say what are the products we can just mention watch so this is the function calling actually but however if you want to see let's say i'm just printing this one so get product actually there is a print statement so we don't need to do anything then after let's say i'm just printing the only the get product here i'm just removing the parenthesis and see how it goes so let's execute here you can clearly see the first time get product will show the watch and product added to the inventory the price is shown clearly here but print the get product without parenthesis here you are printing the object function object so you can clearly see the function the object name is get product 
the type is function and this object is present in particular memory location so that's why here in the callback you are sending the memory location of the function so that you have the reference of the function so whenever you want to call that function go you will go to that function object location and you will call the product so you will call the function the same like our real time example you have the mobile number but however mobile number it does not mean that you are going to call him but you have the let's say backup or you have the number with you so that any time if you want to call you can call like how you are going to your contact list and you are getting the mobile number and calling the same way here the function object location will be saved into your method and whenever you want to call you can call that this is a simple understanding about the callback function so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day